What's up, Trade Hackers? Welcome to today's update. Today's Tuesday, May 26th. Hope everybody had a great long Memorial Day weekend. Back in action, first trading day of the week, starting with the Trade Hacker question of the day. Got this question in our community today. What's the difference between double calendars and double diagonals? Let's go to the platform and take a look at an example to help explain what the difference is. So we're looking at SPY. And let's start with the double calendar. So if we're on the trade tab, and I'm just choosing some expirations here, so like the three and the six day, for example, you're always going to be selling the front week with a shorter duration, and you're buying options in a further dated cycle. So let's just use the, the options with three days and six days to expiration. Simply open that up and choose some out of the money options. So Let's just choose the 30-ish delta, so the 33. We're talking about the 302 strike. So we're going to buy, go to double diagonal, and then double calendar. So you got to hit that drop down and hit double calendar. And then what we're going to do, so it automatically populates the next expiration cycle. And then we can choose a similar option on the put side, so about the 35 delta, so the 297 puts. So we can choose a 297 put here and a 297 put here. So let me take this over to the Analyze tab and I'll help you understand what I'm doing. So basically what we've done is in these shorter duration, in these three-day options, May 29th, we are selling these. Okay, so we're selling those. And then in the further dated options, we are buying those. Okay, but our calls are the same. So you've got the 302 call, you've got the 302 call in both expirations. On the put side, you've got the 297 put and the 297 put. So with a calendar spread, or in this case, a double calendar spread, your puts are the same in both expiration cycles and your calls are the same in both expiration cycles. Okay, so or if you do a single calendar, your, your strikes are the same in the front week as they are in the back week. So that's a double calendar. Now, if we go and check out a diagonal, let's use the same expiration cycles, but all we're doing is, you know, with the calendar spread, we're using the same strikes with different expiration cycles. And in the diagonal spreads, we are using different strikes and different expiration cycles. Okay, so let's set one of those up. So we're gonna use the same, start with the same 302, and we're gonna buy a double diagonal and choose double diagonal. Okay, and then we're gonna go, let's go to the same one, the 297, that's the uh, 297 put. Okay, so we'll do the 297 put here in the front week. But then we can go out to the next expiration cycle and choose different ones. So if we go to the June one, you know, let's say you wanted to use a lower delta. So instead of, you know, that same strike, let's go down here and use, say, the 306 on the call side. Instead of the 302, we use the 306. And then on the put side, same thing. Let's go down and use the 290 as an example. Yeah, 290, there you are. And then let's take this over to the Analyze tab and, and check out the difference. Okay, so remember, here's the here's the calendar spread. It's going to be pretty balanced and equal, kind of a delta neutral trade to start out with. Whereas the, the diagonal is a little bit different where, you know, depending on the strikes you choose, let's say you like the idea of the calendar spread, but you wanted more upside, you know, if the, if the stock moved higher, where you're willing to take the, the risk on the downside. Now, this is a pretty dramatic situation here. We wouldn't actually place a trade like this necessarily, uh, but you can play around with the strikes. And the, the main difference, like I said, is with the double calendar, you're using the same strikes in different expiration cycles. And with the diagonal, you're using different strikes and different expiration cycles. So, Hopefully that helps a little bit. You can play around with those to kind of figure out the the strategy that you're that you're trying to accomplish based on your overall assumption. All right, let's go to the charts and see what's going on in the overall market. Now the S&Ps are up 36. They were up quite a bit more. They were up as much as 50 some and they're coming down. Now the market still has about 10 minutes, 11 minutes before it closes. Uh, so we're seeing a little bit of downside action here late in the day, even though the market's still up decent. S&P's up 35, 
Dow up 52, NASDAQ is down 24, and the Russell's up 37. So what's going on with, with the different sectors today? Well, banks are up big. I mean, you look at Bank of America is up over 7%. Citi is up almost 10%. Capital One Financial up almost 10%. So big move higher in the banks. Uh, small caps obviously up higher as well with the Russell leading the way up you know, 2.6 plus percent where the NASDAQ is actually down. So tech is actually lagging. So we've got banks up, uh, you know, travel stocks are up. If we look at some of the airlines, Delta airline, Delta's up 12%. You know, Expedia is up 6%. Uh, you know, some of these other airlines up huge. So big moves to the upside in travel. Looks like everybody, weather's getting warmer. People are looking to travel. Does that mean stocks are going up? Well, today it does, but not necessarily. So we've got a travel up, banks up, uh, tech is lagging, kind of down to neutral, and then you know it's kind of a mixed bag between between everything else, depending on the depending on the stock. So interesting stuff. We look at a chart of just the S and P. You know we're still in a pretty range bound little box. I mean it looked like maybe it was going to break out to the upside, and you know it still possibly could. Uh, you know, but we're still in this range. We're not. We haven't really moved much. So. We'll see what happens. Obviously, Nasdaq kind of the the lagger today, and it, it it was popped up earlier, but it's come back down. It's actually red on the day. Nasdaq is is uh, not quite as flat, but more of a you know it's got kind of a an upward sloping channel uh, as opposed to straight across like the S and P. So it'll be interesting to see what happens here. Are we kind of hitting the top? Are we going to roll over? Or is this thing really going to make a run back to new highs? I don't think new highs is in the cards, but I've been saying that for a while now. So you know that opinion on us. And we'll, but we'll see what happens. You know, anything is possible. The market can do anything at any time. It can stay irrational, can be unreasonable, no matter what kind of fear you might be seeing in the market, no matter what the media headlines say, the market can do anything. So you want to have a strategy. You want to stay mechanical based on what you're doing. And so that's what we've done. And what did we do today? We added a piece in gold, took some profits on another piece. We added a, a position in the S&P. And we are just letting some of our other positions continue to work. We've got a decent amount of short delta, so we're definitely playing for some downside. But we're not way over short by any means. We've got a pretty balanced portfolio with some extra short delta. So we will definitely benefit from some downside, which is what our assumption is, you know, over the next couple months. Uh, but we're still going to stay mechanical and keep doing our thing. One other thing I wanted to mention was earnings. Not much earnings as far as the stocks that we trade this week. I mean... Obviously, Memorial Day was Monday, nothing there. Tuesday, you know, nothing exciting. Wednesday, nothing exciting. Really, the only stock that we trade, and we trade some of these others just every once in a while, but, you know, Costco is a, a, a good, liquid, big stock that we would trade. So that's really the only major one this week, and that's Thursday after the close. So not sure we'll put on a trade there, but we'll check that out on Thursday before the market closes to see if we see an opportunity. If you guys have any questions, feel free to drop us at a line in the community at community.navigationtrading.com. See you there.